NTI day number 21, fifth grade reading. So we go over vocabulary in context. Number one, dominated. Herds of cattle once dominated the plains. They were often the biggest thing in sight. Number two, extending. The cowgirl wears chaps extending or reaching from the ankles to the hips. Number three, sprawling. This cowboy rides his horse over the vast and sprawling range. Number four, hostile. A farmer who is hostile or unfriendly to cattle ranchers can use fences to stop cattle drives. Number five, acknowledged. This cowboy acknowledged or recognized his fans with a smile. Number six, flourished. Cattle were driven to towns near rail lines. These towns flourished and grew rich. Seven residents, when cowboys were not living on the trail, they were residents in the ranch bunkhouse. Number eight, prospered. A cowboy who prospered or succeeded may buy fancy boots or a hat. Number nine, acquainted. Cowboys get to know one another on cattle drives. They become well acquainted. Number 10, decline. Because there, was, there has been a decline in cattle drives, there are fewer cowboys today. Okay, here's our story. Vaqueros, America's First Cowboys by George Ancona. Essential question. What kinds of lessons were learned by people who lived in the Old West? Imagine, 500 years ago, there were no cows or horses in North and South America. Thousands of years earlier, there had been horses, but they disappeared. Since there were no cows, there were no cowboys. Of course, today there are cowboys. It is all because of Christopher Columbus. The Journeys After his voyage to the Americas in 1492, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain. He told the Spanish king and queen of the riches to be found in the paradise he discovered. He described the native people who lived there. The royal couple agreed to more voyages. They needed gold to help pay for their expanding empire. The following year, Columbus returned to the West Indies. He brought 17 ships loaded with over a thousand settlers, horses, and cattle. The ships dropped anchor at an island they named Hispaniola. Today, the island is shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. For the next 25 years, Spanish ships sailed in and out of Hispaniola. The Spaniards explored and conquered the nearby islands. The native islanders were enslaved. Thousands died of smallpox, a terrible disease for which they had no resistance. As the islanders disappeared, they were replaced by the settlers and their animals. Christopher Columbus landing on the island of Hispaniola, 1493. In 1503, Hernán Cortés, a Spanish adventurer, arrived in the West Indies. He spent several years helping to conquer Cuba. Then, in 1518, Cortés set out with a fleet of six ships to explore the nearby coast to the west. On board were 500 men and 16 horses strong enough to carry a man in full armor. The ships dropped anchor near where the port of Veracruz, Mexico is today. The Totonac people who lived there welcomed Cortes. They offered to help him conquer the hostile Aztec empire that had long dominated them. Cortes did so in two years. He claimed all the lands in the name of the Spanish king he called the land New Spain. 
It wasn't long before the Spanish conquerors brought more livestock to the colonies. The animals were allowed to graze on the open grasslands. Many took off into the wilderness, forming large herds of wild horses and cattle. Hernan Cortes brought horses back to the mainland of North America. The Expanding Colony The Spanish king rewarded Cortes and his soldiers with gifts of land. Throughout New Spain, they built ranches called haciendas and prospered. Accompanying the soldiers and settlers were Catholic missionaries. They had come to convert the native people. They moved north, building missions and churches along the California coast, extending the lands of New Spain. In 1540, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado organized an expedition into the northern territories. Coronado was searching for the legendary golden cities of Cibola. Along with the men and supplies, he brought 500 longhorn cattle to supply meat and hides. Review the map. What water sources run through the area known as New Spain? The expedition never found the city of gold. However, it did introduce the first Longhorns to what is now the American Southwest. From those first 500 Longhorns, 10 million had spread across the Texas Plains by the 1800s. The soldiers and priests of New Spain were already acquainted with raising cattle in Spain. Many were skilled horsemen. Even so, they needed help in rounding up the livestock on their sprawling lands. At that time, it was against the law for any native person to ride a horse. But the ranchers and priests needed help. They taught the native converts to ride and use the lasso, or lasso, a looped rope. These men who worked with horses and cattle were called vaqueros. In Spanish, the word means cowmen. With the vaqueros, a new culture took root in the West. It lives on today. Analyze the text. Main ideas and details. Summarize the sections, the journeys, and the expanding colony on pages 698 through 701. What is the main idea of each section? What details does the author use to support these main ideas? An early vaquero lassos a steer. Coronado introduced the longhorn. A way of life. The vaquero's job was to keep tabs on cattle in the wild and round them up. It took many vaqueros to surround a herd so that it could be moved to the hacienda. These roundups are called rodeos in Spanish. Rodeo comes from a verb that means to go around. The vaqueros were also needed to capture the wild horses that flourished on the prairies and valleys of the large haciendas. The vaqueros called the horses mesteños, a word that would become mustangs. Vaqueros spent most of their lives in the saddle, riding hard in all kinds of weather. At night, they sat around the fire where they cooked their meals. They told stories and sang songs about their lives. Then they rolled up into their ponchos to sleep. From California to Texas, native vaqueros were acknowledged to be the best horsemen in the world. A herd of Mustangs. An early vaquero with his lariat. Doing the job. A vaquero had to cope with a rough landscape and harsh weather. He needed the right tools to do his job. Vaqueros wore wide-brimmed hats called sombreros. Sombra means shade in Spanish. The sombrero protected vaqueros from the burning sun. A vaquero also wore chaparreras or chaps. These were leather leggings worn over trousers. They protected the vaquero from cactus, thickets of wild brush, 
and rope burns. The horses belonged to the owner of the hacienda. The vaquero, however, owned the saddle that he put on the horse. The saddle had to be comfortable for both horse and rider. The vaquero's feet slid into two wooden stirrups that hung from the saddle. A vaquero's most trusted tool was his lasso, also known as the lariat. Often, a vaquero would have to gallop after a runaway steer. He would toss the loop of the lariat around the steer's horns, neck, or foot. Then he would wrap the rope around his saddle horn and rein in his horse. This would hold the steer or bring it to the ground. Once the herds were together, they calmed down and began to graze. Mounted vaqueros would separate the calves from their mothers to brand them with the hacienda's mark. A Modern Saddle The Vaquero Legend in 1821, Mexico won its War of Independence from Spain. All of New Spain became the independent nation of Mexico. The northern lands of Mexico, however, were difficult to govern. Many American immigrants crossed into the territory that would one day become Texas. Soon, there was a large population of Americans in Texas. In fact, they outnumbered the Mexican residents who lived there for generations. With the Americans came changes in the culture of the vaquero. Even the word changed. When the Americans tried to say vaqueros, it came out buquera. Later, the word became buckaroo. It was only after 1860 that men who worked with cattle were called cowboys. Cowboys continued the culture of the vaquero. In 1836, Texas declared itself independent from Mexico. Nine years later, it joined the United States. Then, in 1847, Mexico lost a war with the U.S. As a result, it lost its northern lands. They would become the states of California, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. After the end of the Civil War, the vaqueros were joined by freed slaves and young men from the East. These newcomers wanted a new life in the wide open spaces. They had to learn what the vaqueros had been doing for centuries. The large ranches needed many men to manage the huge herds of cattle on the vast prairies. Cattle drives would take weeks to travel from ranches to railroads. From there, the cattle traveled to the markets in eastern and western cities. The invention of barbed wire made it possible to build fences to keep cattle in pastures. The vaquero was not needed to ride the wide open spaces. Long cattle drives became unnecessary. The decline of the vaquero began. Yet the vaqueros traditions did not fade from the American imagination. At the turn of the century, the cowboy became the hero of the West. Books, magazine stories, and the early movies featured the brave exploits of the American cowboy. Analyze the text. Text and graphic features. Identify the photos, illustrations, map, captions, and headings that the author uses on pages 698 through 705. What do these features help you understand about the vaqueros? Cowboy movies were among the first movies made. A horse rears, throwing its rodeo rider. Celebrating traditions. Today, the arts and skills of the vaquero can be seen in two countries. They appear in the charrerias of Mexico and the rodeos of the United States. Both vaqueros and cowboys pride themselves in their skills. They keep alive the traditions and cultures of their past. On September 14th, Mexicans celebrate El Dia del Charro. It is a holiday of parades, church services, music, and charrerias. 
The charreria is a rodeo where vaqueros can exhibit their skills. They perform with charros and charas, gentlemen and women riders. The men dress in their elegant silver-buttoned outfits and large sombreros. The women wear the traditional dress of the China Poblana. Many of the events performed in rodeos and charrerias are similar. Both may include riding a bucking horse or bull and getting thrown off, for example. But like the first vaqueros, the riders are ready. There is an old saying in the corrals. It goes, there's never been a horse that can't be rode. There's never been a cowman who hasn't been throwed. The grammar may not be right, but the idea is pure cowboy. Analyze the text. Adages. The author uses an adage or a traditional saying in the third paragraph on this page. Why do you think he chooses to end the selection this way? What do you think the author means when he says, the idea is pure cowboy?